Wow, my new simulated classroom is almost complete. It's so realistic. There's just one last detail. Computer, terminal, please. Reset teacher character's shirt value to periwinkle. And done. Perfect. Select all and save. Now to go grab a cup of coffee before I run some detailed classroom simulations. Kyle, you in here? We're making s'mores. Wow, this is amazing. Nice, a new simulated classroom. Computer, run program. Let's pretend we're explorers searching for a new trade route. Sounds risky and cool. This is gonna be such a powerful tool to help teachers. We should find Kyle and tell him what a great job he's done. I saw on his calendar he's meeting with Coach today. Hmm, maybe this will call him. C-O-A-C-H, Coach. Did it work? Uh, it certainly did something. You might wanna take a look. Everyone take out some construction paper and markers. We're going to design exploration logs for our voyage. I don't know about this. Hey, don't worry. We can be partners. Grab a marker. I think I may have introduced a bug into the system. Spencer? Spencer? Right. I need to understand exactly how to create effective classroom simulations in order to fix this. Computer, play LYC episode Classroom Role-Playing and Simulations. Welcome to Launch Your Classroom, I'm Kyle Pope. We've all spent a lot of time in school as students. For years we learned and watched our teachers work. We've gone to college and become certified educators and experts on our curriculum. Although that preparation was great, we really didn't learn how to be a teacher until we actually began teaching our first class. The fact is, being involved and doing something is the best way to understand it. In your classroom, you'll need to use active learning to engage your students. But to have the biggest impact, you'll want to create opportunities for them to actively participate in role plays and classroom simulations. Using these techniques will allow your students to not only hear about a topic, but to be able to act it out. Today on Launch Your Classroom, we're going to take a look at ways that you can create role plays and simulations for your students. Let's get started by designing a scene. I can't explain how freedom of the press affected Supreme Court decisions in the landmark case, New York Times v. Sullivan. Hmm, I taught my students the details of this court case, but now I want to get them thinking on a deeper level. How can I set the stage for meaningful discussion? and help my students explore the perspectives of the key players. Wait, stage? Players? I know, we'll act out the case as a scene. This is a great opportunity to foster active participation through role playing. Let's go to the drawing board to learn more. Students are more likely to retain information when they made a personal connection with the material. You can achieve this by allowing students to leave the classroom and live the content, even if only in their minds. Role play provides new perspectives, challenges student opinions, and shows them approaches to problems they hadn't even considered. It is also a great strategy for students who are extra vocal, extra energetic, or need physical movement to engage with the content. Now that I understand how role playing will liven up my lesson, it's time to create my simulation. The first thing I need to do is create the roles my students will play. I want them to interpret the Constitution from perspectives that might differ from their own. So I've created character cards that represent key figures from all sides of this case. My students will have to think through this exercise as their character. This one, for example, represents the New York Times. I've included a brief summary of the Times role in this case. This way I can ensure my students are guided by accurate and relevant information. I created characters with varying degrees of involvement so that all of my students can perform within their comfort level. 
The judge, for example, will preside over the case but won't speak very much. I included key terms to consider so this student will have plenty to explore even if they aren't as vocal during the activity. Since this is a complex activity, I want to help my students manage their time. So I've created a breakdown of our schedule, which I'll display within the classroom. And I'll call it helpful reminders along the way. I'm feeling confident about this lesson now that I have a solid plan in place. And it looks like I finished just in time for my first class. Good morning, class. Today we have a special activity plan. We're going to act out a scene. Remember that court case? First, I'll explain the activity and our procedures. Then I'll distribute the character cards. Students will work independently to get into character. Next, they'll transform their critical thinking into a written response. Once that's completed, we'll act out the scene. Okay, class, court is in session. Judge, please call your first witness. The Supreme Court calls the Montgomery Police Commissioner to the stand. I'm L.B. Sullivan, and I'm suing the New York Times for libel and defamation. Wow, my students had a lot of fun acting out this scene and their enthusiasm will earn them high marks for participation. Since I want to hold my students accountable for their learning, I've scheduled plenty of time for a group discussion. That way, everyone can share their new insights. Then I'll wrap up with a formative assessment or reflective writing assignment. Whatever you decide to do, be sure to refer back to the role play often. Since your students lived the content, They'll be sure to retain the information and look forward to whatever fun activity you come up with next. Roleplay is the perfect opportunity to get direct participation from your students. But what if your curriculum doesn't naturally lend itself to performance? It's tempting to say, well, I don't teach theater or language arts or history, so I can't use this technique. Well, you're in for a surprise. You'd be amazed how easily you can incorporate role play and simulations into any content area. Let's take a look at three subjects that aren't the first ones you'd consider for role play. Math. How can students act with numbers? Easy, they become the numbers. The next time you assign word problems, let students become the characters and objects that they're counting. Are you graphing lines and curves? Tape an X and Y axis on your classroom floor and let students represent the points on a graph. Are your students ready for a more complicated challenge? Assign students to teams giving each member a famous mathematician's identity. Then assign each team a math problem to solve based on their historical figure skill sets. Pythagoras will be the lead on finding the third side of a right triangle. Florence Nightingale can be the statistics expert and so on. Set a timer and make the problems progressively more difficult. Giving students roles holds them accountable for their learning. Science. Learning about the physical world is more fun when it's a physical activity. Assign students as protons and electrons so they can build molecules of different elements for the rest of the class to see. Students can become different parts of a cell and demonstrate their function in a tableau. Or they can act out a cycle, like photosynthesis or the transfer of energy, while explaining the process. Help students understand the moon and Earth's rotation and revolution around the sun by letting them become the objects in orbit. Just don't let them get too dizzy. Bring added interest to labs by letting students impersonate the first scientists to try the experiment. Then, have them explain the results to their classmates. Role play brings life to science. World language. Students acquire language with real world practice. Bring the culture of the language to your classroom. You can transform your tables into cafe seating and let your students, now guests, servers, and chefs, bring a restaurant to life in its native language. Or visit a museum in a great world city and assign each student an artist or inventor who explains their contributions in their native language. Students might even role play shoppers in a simulated outdoor market. Allowing students to speak in an imaginary setting helps them gain confidence and fluency. Remember, participating directly in content makes it more memorable. So take the objectives you really need your students to understand, those with many details or those with complicated processes, and let students take over through simulation. 
No matter what subject you teach, role play turns learning into an educational game, making students more receptive, less self-conscious, and more engaged in your content. So, what have you learned so far about classroom role playing and simulations? Well, they're absolutely engaging ways to ignite the curiosity of your students and get them hands-on experience with the subject matter. And you definitely need to be intentional when assigning roles. Wait, that's it. Well, that was interesting. Spencer, you're back. How are you feeling? Taller? Wait a minute. How could the holographic classroom change you That's into- That's not important right now. How's the simulation? Well... There's no I in team. Trust your teammates. We need more information. Computer, resume episode playback. Lesson plans involving role play are exciting. Students love the opportunity for active learning, and teachers love to see students engage in creative thought. But before you start a role play lesson, remember, careful planning is the most important thing you will do when it comes to a whole class simulation. Let's start planning our role play lesson with these three questions. Number one, what objectives do you want your students to understand with this activity? Because role play is a game, you will need to approach planning with the strategy or the why. Students should get the opportunity to think critically and explore many angles of an argument or problem. Otherwise, the role play is too simple and will not engage your students. The role play should provide meaningful opportunities for discussion, problem solving, and exploration. Number two, since this is a performance as well as a game, let's talk about the how. What amount of time do you and your students have to invest in this activity? If you are operating on a limited time schedule, and most teachers are, you will need to set limits so the role play doesn't crowd out your other plans, or worse, you run out of time to reinforce the learning your role play was intended to deliver. Map out your time for introducing the topic, post activity discussion, and a formative assessment. Plan the length of your role play within these parameters. Secure enough time in the role play for a meaningful final product, whether that is a report, presentation, or a discussion leading into a structured activity. Remember, the role play activity is the vehicle for learning, not the end result. Use your time wisely. Finally, let's turn to the what. Number three, which kinds of props and resources will you need for your simulation? A few thoughtful stage props can make role play even more fun, but in a classroom simulation, less is more. Your goal is to make students think and problem solve. Their imaginations will create the backdrop for your scenario more effectively than any fancy costumes or prop ever could. If you do use props, be selective. Make sure they reinforce learning rather than diverting your students' attention. In planning a role play lesson, your end goal is more than just a fun class experience. You want students to emerge from the activity with a deeper understanding of your content. If you can carry out the simulation with strategy and preparation, your students will remember this as one of the most fun and meaningful experiences they will have in your class. To be or not to be. With simulations, being is the name of the game. These active learning strategies can help elevate your students' understanding of and engagement with class objectives. When students get to act out the content of your class, they will have a more personal connection to the material. Simulations involve the whole class, give students the opportunity to use their imaginations, and also allow them to think critically about what they're learning. Let's take a look at how to build an effective, simple simulation. Okay class, so today we're going to be doing an activity where you will all pretend to be land-dwelling or water-dwelling life forms. Make sure you plan your simulation around what you want students to accomplish. You each will play different inhabitants of water and earth ecosystems, identify your unique features, and discuss why you're located where you're located. You'll want to assign each student a role to play ahead of time that suits their individual needs. 
If you know a student is shy, assign them a less vocal role and leave the more boisterous characters to your outgoing students. Patrick is a little bit quiet. It might make him nervous to be a loud animal like a lion or a tiger. Hmm. I know, Patrick would make a great jellyfish. Make sure you thoroughly explain the activities, processes, and procedures to your students. Okay, I'm gonna walk around the classroom and give each of you a piece of paper that has a different water or earth life form on it. Then you'll have five minutes to get acquainted with your roles. Then you will each have 30 seconds to play this character and describe yourself and the class will figure out if you belong in an aquatic or a terrestrial ecosystem and why. Making sure you give your students enough time to plan and perform their characters is essential. While getting into character will be fun for your kids, it's most important that students convey the information on their roles accurately. So be sure to provide them with sufficient details. Okay class, time is up. Let's all give our attention to Patrick while he shares his life form with us. I'm a moon jellyfish. I don't have a backbone, which makes me an invertebrate. My diet is mostly microscopic fish and animals, and I catch my food in my tentacles. Wow, Patrick, that is so cool. Who thinks that Patrick the moon jellyfish is an aquatic animal or a terrestrial animal? I see that you all guessed aquatic, and you are... Correct! Great job, Patrick! Now, drift on over to the left side of the classroom with the other aquatic life forms. It's important to have a formative assessment follow your simulation. Recentering on the objective will allow students to connect the simulation to the content as well as have fun. Exit tickets are an effective way to make sure your students have a firm understanding of your content. You can assure your simple simulation will be successful by following these guidelines and by using your own imagination. Keep these tips in mind and your classroom simulation is guaranteed to be a showstopper. Using engaging activities is essential to keeping your students interested in your curriculum. To really get the maximum amount of learning, you'll need to go a step further and allow students to apply their experience. A great way to do this is through creating role plays or simulations. Although these types of activities can take time to develop and perfect, once completed, they will make a lasting impact on your students. This month on Launch Your Classroom, we're going to continue to focus on role plays and simulations. We'll take a look at how to involve students who may be a bit hesitant to participate. We're going to demonstrate how to design a more complex simulation, and we'll finish up by asking an educational expert common questions teachers have about role plays and simulations. So be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel to get all of our upcoming professional development content. Thank you, and we'll see you next time on Launch Your Classroom. And done. We did it. Everything's back the way we found it. Kyle and Coach. Real Coach? Of course it is. Why would you say that? No reason. Anyway, I've been looking everywhere for you guys. I want to give you some great tips that I learned about classroom simulations when I was designing this place. Let's go down to the Launchpad Cafe. Oh, we've learned a lot about simulations as well. But we can always learn more.